Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Today, uh, we have as our guest, Dr. Ray Garendi. Everyone knows who he is. His website is uh, bad f- badfatherjokes.com. You can find all the bad dad <laughs> jokes there that you want. Maybe I'm going to sue you, Bear. <laughs> We're going to have a great time. We're going to get deep. We're going to talk about uh, the, the last verse of the Old Testament. I'll turn the hearts of the fathers to the sons and the sons to their fathers. If ever there was a, a need for us to talk about it, and having the right guest to talk about it is right now. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. We don't usually have returning guests, but I think I've had Dr. Ray on about as much as he can stand it. Uh, I love, I just love being, being around him. He has such great uh, physical energy, and there's always the joy of the Lord. And uh, he always catches you off guard because you could never imagine someone would actually dare to say some of the really bad dad jokes that he shares. Ray, Dr. Ray, welcome to the show. Hey, what? I don't know if I could measure up to that intro. <laughs> hey, who can do more push-ups, your wife or you? I think I got her. I got her, but her form's better. Her form's but Yeah, you cheat. Those little uh, one-inch push-ups. Oh, no. alligator arms. Alligator arms. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, that, that that you go down there and you just push up an inch and then push down an inch, push up an inch, <laughs> push down an inch. Yeah, I, I just recorded another show and my wife was in the background doing these radical... Uh, just all every kind of different push-up you can imagine. So uh, they kind of humble us. I know your wife uh, won a push-up contest, right? I talked her into it. She didn't want to do it. And I talked her into it. And after she hit the floor, she had nothing. So I had to pick her up because it was over. I could have left her down there for a while. <laughs> she couldn't push herself back up. Well, my, my ninja sense, I used to always say, you can do one more of anything. Oh, jeez. It's just very That's painful. What, what, what of our kids? I could have done one more kid. I think it would have killed me. <laughs> well, you know, he used to, we used to call assisted. You know what assisted push-up is? No. It's where you push on the person's shoulder. You push down on their shoulders while they're doing push Oh, push-ups. okay. So <laughs> resistance, resistance push-up. No, we call, we call it assisted. Like, we're going to help you out here. We're going to push oh, down oh, on your oh. shoulder. I don't in want case, any of your assistance. <laughs> in case you can't get down low enough we're gonna we're gonna yeah i know in my first well always every black belt test you got to do your 100 push-ups or you or, or the you know the very first thing you do get your 100 push-ups 100 in. straight yeah you gotta do 100 100, 100 or no you're not or the 100 straight yeah 100 straight or the Whoa. or the the test is over so uh, that's that's incredible yeah but there's all Especially kinds of guy your size do you do the Kind of like you have one hand forward, one hand back, and you do the triangle push-ups and all the different. Because you don't want to get bored when you're up to about 300 push-ups. You kind of get bored, right? Yeah, yeah. I sometimes have to go to the bathroom, so you know. <laughs> well, we love having you with us, Doctor Ray, and uh, everyone at EW10. Everyone know, knows your your ministry, but I wanted to talk with you today uh, about what we're, we're. This is a recorded show, but we've been seeing here. Uh, things going on in the streets that just remind me of when my son uh, Shane was in Nepal on a missionary trip uh, they went into the jungle and as they went into the jungle uh, to these villages there'd be uh, there'd be little forts watchtowers ar- around the village and men would station themselves there and Shane said what's that for and he said that's for the raging elephants when they, they'll come through and st- run right through our huts and one actually did while he was there the hut next to him and, he's, and they, what they told him is that the male elephants, the adult male elephants had all been slaughtered for their tusks. And there was no men to teach the young men, the young elephants, how to, to control them and what their, what, their, what their role is or to mentor them. You know what I'm trying to say? And I see what's going on in the street right now, and that's what it feels like. It feels like a lot of fatherless children, especially fatherless men that have all this pent-up rage and energy from not being fathered, first of all, properly, but also just don't know, don't have a clue about life. Our culture bear has decided that males are pretty expendable. Uh, We're probably the first culture in history that has taken males and put them 
down in terms of their role. Uh, they're either not needed, or if they are on the scene, they're buffoons, or they're uh, subservient to maybe more feminine characteristics. So what has happened is a lot of guys have embraced that role. They have, they have said, well, if I really want to be a leadership man kind of guy, I'm going to be toxic. The culture is going to accuse me of being an imperious, overbearing, autocratic male. And what they have done is they essentially have taken guys and said, get rid of your manhood. Get they've, rid of it. We've let, them, they, we've, they, they've, uh, we've let ourselves be neutered. How do I you, would say. How do you define what a man is? It, 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 now remember, this is going to be this is going to be not politically correct because we're going to talk about manly virtue here, everybody. So if you're not ready for this, turn to a soft rock station. How do you define the, define a man? In the purest sense of the word, bear. A man is a confident, merciful leader. He is not afraid to lead. He is not afraid to use his strength of will, his strength of mind, even his strength of body to protect and to lead. Those are those are qualities now in our culture that have been painted badly three layers deep as pathological. And and we have allowed it. I, I'm starting. I'll tell you, I am I am much more feisty now than I was 20 years ago. I have decided I am tired of being told how to talk. I'm tired of being told how to think. I'm tired of being told I can't go beyond the narrative. I owe it to my wife, my kids, and the society at large to be the best guy I can be, strong and merciful. You know, strength is, strength is um, you know, here in, there's a, a new T-shirt that they, they have here in Hawaii, which my wife said, you got to get this shirt. It says, don't mistake my aloha for weakness. And I used so to, true. yeah, I used to say, don't, 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 don't mistake my kindness for weakness. Uh, there's a certain point that you can't cross with a real man. I mean, he'll be, he'll tolerate you. He'll be a shock absorber. He'll, he'll be merciful towards you. But there's a point when you have to say, no, don't cross. In that all line. of human history, bear men and women had much more complementary roles. The women had certain roles, and the men had certain roles. Men were responsible for a lot of the hard stuff physically, you know, building, clearing, killing food, protecting. Those were roles that really separated us. Whether you liked it or not, that's the way it was. It's no longer that way. The women now are better educated. The women don't need men to earn money. The women don't need men really to move a couch. So because of that, there's been a movement to, to make men more like women. In, in, in certain characteristics. Now that's not bad. That isn't bad if I'm gonna be more communicative, if I'm gonna be more thoughtful, if I'm gonna be more sensitive, if I'm gonna be more emotionally expressive. That's not bad. But what is bad is when those push out the stuff of manhood, that's what's bad. The stuff, that even that is a manly term, you know, like the, the stuff of the <laughs> Well, there, there's so many young men I think that look in the mirror and and they don't even know what a what a what a man is, you know. Um, they 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 hate themselves. They've been they've been first of all maybe raised in a home where the father hasn't really been there. He's been too busy trying to get ahead in his career. There's nothing wrong with working hard as a man. Your family needs that financial support, but it can can become their focus. Or worse than that, they're in a home where there's no father, and worse than that, they're in a home where the woman hates men because they she's been betrayed been let been let down by men and so the the son himself hates men right and he's a man so how do you how do you contend with that there was a survey done and this was back in the 80s and i think it's gotten worse since they asked women are men jerks 67% of the women said men are jerks this is sci very scientific it sounds like well yeah was that the it, actual it, word was actually actually a word they used yes because yeah, it really defines it yes. totally defines yeah. it no obviously uh every everybody who answered it had their own idea of what a jerk is but, but we kind of still, know yeah no i, I think it, if you're, you're familiar with this bear i think i've heard you talk about this before you have you heard of that survey that said 
if a mom and a dad take a kid to church throughout childhood, the chances of that kid staying in church. Now, at the time of the survey, this was 1980, the survey was done. So at the time, it was 80 percent. Now, it's not that now. The culture really strips religion from everybody. So it's probably lower. But it's still the highest percentage of kids that would go to church if mom and dad took them to church. If only mom takes them to church, it dropped to 50 percent. Now, my guess would be now it's even lower than that. If no one took them to church, it was 20 percent. But the significant finding bear in that survey was this. If dad only took the kids to church, the chances of them attending church as adults was pretty close to equal to if mom and dad took them to church. Yeah, it, you know, it was, it's a you know, Pew Research. Everyone recognizes that name. Yeah, if, if just the woman takes them, the, the percentage of c- children that will continue to go to church drops dramatically. If the man and the women both take them, then it goes up to 80, 85%. But if just the man takes them, it stays right almost at that same level, 80 to 85%. That tells you, everybody, what it means uh, that children are looking to their fathers for leadership and for example. We're talking with Dr. Ray Garendi, my good friend. I just love this guy. When he walks into a room, if we happen to bump into each other someplace, I just light up and I go grab him. And and, and I, don't, I don't even remember why or what event we're at. You huh? hurt me the last time you bear hugged me. <laughs> I did? Yes. When I hugged you, your muscles were so strong it hurt my arm. <laughs> Just like hugging a rock. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Watson Convention. Oh, Dr. Ray, where can they find you again? DrRay.com. D-R-R-A-Y.com. Man, that's a good that's a good URL, man. Dr. Ray. I, doc- I had to buy it. <laughs> I was Bear, wondering. I had to buy it. Somebody I had wondering. it. I offered money for well, it. Well, I actually I bought it because I knew you were going to be. You're, you're such a you know, a well, rage. That was you that yeah, charged was, me I, twelve thousand. Yeah, yeah, I hid, I hid behind that hidden, you know, wall. But yeah, I, I, I banked that money, and then I bought the Coca Cola uh, in the CatholicChurch dot com. So <laughs> we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Hey, man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at DeepAdventure dot com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak Adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Everyone sees, uh, men, men and women love this ministry. Women receive a lot of good, solid teaching and uh, encouragement from this ministry, from Deep Adventure Ministries. But we realize that you know, everyone perceives us as a men's ministry, and we are. But God has really spoken to us about reaching out to mama bears. We were having a, a sort of a planning meeting, and someone was saying, we need to have a special site just for the mama bears. And I'm going, yeah, that's interesting. The next day, my son walks into the house. Out of the blue, he just says, hey, remember when we had our cabin in Montana? And remember what those mama bears were like? They were so fierce. You know, we've, I've had a couple encounters with them. Once uh, my father had an encounter where he stepped into a clearing and saw a big old log, and then the log moved. And he was a mama grizzly, 
And then he looked to the right, and to the right is two cubs, and he's like situated himself between the mom and her cubs, and he's like, he got really small and didn't make eye contact and started walking backwards as the mama bear ste steps up into all fours, does a false charge, and then snaps her jowls. Uh, mama bears are fierce, and so God has really spoken to us to say, mobilize the strength of these women uh, in the ministry. So if you go to deepadventure.com and click on mama bears, you'll see we have ways that we can give you the tools you need to, to evangelize uh, everyone in your life, but especially the men that you want to evangelize too. So go to our website and find out what the Holy Spirit's up to, Mama Bears. We're talking to Dr. Ray Garendi. Uh, one, of my, one of my, I just love this man so much. Um, he's, his his uh, website is drray.com. Everyone knows him. He's the doctor. He's our, he's our counselor on EWTN. Uh, and uh, we want to talk to, we were talking today about the most on, politically incorrect thing there is, and that's manliness. Dr. Ray, what does it mean for a man to defend a woman? Bear, one of the common things I hear in marriage counseling is this, that the woman has taken over the role of main authority. She does the disciplining, she sets the standards, she sets the bar. And dad is either Disney dad, Mr. Oblivious, Mr. Keep the Peace, or Mr. Honey, I was that way when I was a kid. I think I turned out pretty good. And the women are thinking, let's gather the relatives and vote. I advise men, protect that woman. No, there's not gonna be any foreign raids on your house, and there's not gonna be a grizzly bear charging up your porch. Where she gets the most assault, believe it or not, is from the kids. Amen, so, that's right. That's right. If a guy is sitting in the Barker lounger, in the family room, and he hears his wife locked into a battle with a kid, don't sit there thinking to yourself, I close my eyes. I can't tell which one of them's 11 year old. Get in there and protect that woman. That is not just your mom you're talking to that way. That is my wife you go to your room. And I tell the guys, if you, if you stand up for that woman, if you do not allow her to be mistreated by a child as she's, as she's trying to get her way out of it, and she's using too many words, get in there and protect her. You don't have to go in like a wounded male grizzly. You don't have to go in by a gorilla beating your chest. You go in there and you pull the plug on what this child is doing and you discipline the child. Most women appreciate that. The women who don't are the ones who think, oh, he's being harsh. Oh, he's being, he's being too authoritative. He's being too imperious. Oh, that's intimidating. But if you don't go in screaming, if you don't go in kicking things, if you simply go in with a calm, quiet strength and protect a woman, most of them are gonna be eternally grateful. And you know, Bear, sometimes I used to give my boys a couple bucks. I'd say, go down and give your mother grief. I'll be right down. <laughs> and, and I got all kinds of affection after that. Uh, I know that's not true. Although I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past you. I just remember my mom's favorite words were, wait till your dad gets home. You Those know, days knew. are gone. Yeah, well, but we need to begin to stand. We need to be men again. And I agree, the children, you can see them. They bully their parents. It's, you know, you know it's really, when, you, when you're in Waikiki Beach, you see a lot of families, right? And uh, it's almost like the children run the household sometimes. Well, it isn't sometimes, Bear. It's unfortunately a lot more than it used to be. But the thing is, the guys allow it. Okay, women, if you look at the research, women are more verbal than men. They work with feelings more than men. They use uh, more uh, negotiation than men. I mean, that's just that's, that's a, that's a research-based difference between men and women. Men are more action-oriented. They use less words, and they are more prone to to move. But if a man surrenders those natural attributes, then what he does is he allows the woman to try to control this kid, especially if he's a 15 year old male, she's trying to control him by maybe arguing with him or nagging him or re-reminding him and she's getting frustrated. The women want to know that the dads, and you know this because you're, you're into protection, the dads have got their six. They're going to protect their six. You know, one of the things too is just it. It men, 
you, t- you, you talked about the Barca lounger, right? The, the big, cush- soft couch in their home, and maybe they're having a drink or a beer or watching football, whatever. Y- to be a good father and a good husband, like to have your woman six, you have to get up. You have to physically move. Yelling across the room doesn't do it. You know, and, and then going in and, and, and terrorizing someone doesn't do it because you want to get back to the football game. Uh, the most important job that you have as a, as, a, as a man is to love and protect your, your wife and your children. It's also the greatest adventure that you can, ha- that you can have in life is to, is to, is to protect and, and, and provide for your family and to bring eternal beings into existence. And to raise them, you know, Archbishop Chaput, I was, maybe you were there at the Napa Institute uh, when he was speaking, and they asked him, what's the key to, uh, to changing the world? You know, we see all the chaos going on. What's the right program for evangelization? And he said, get married, have lots of children, raise them up in the Lord. That's always been, you know, the, the evangelistic approach of, of Jesus. It's all about, you know, the ohana, the family. Go ahead. I think we men can become lazy bear. You said, get up out of that Barca lounger, walk in there. We can easily become like, I know you lift weights. I know I lift weights. And you remember the first time you lifted weights, you walked into that room and you're looking at those 80 pound dumbbells and you're thinking, what the heck, what can I do with that? I can't do anything with that. You had no chance. But as you worked, you worked your way up to 80, up to 90, up to 100. And you're, you're three years later, you're handling that weight. Well, that's what I tell dads. Look. It may not seem natural for you to get up and go in there and protect that woman. It's foreign. It doesn't fit well what you what you've done the last 10 years. But as you do it, it's like lived in weights. It becomes effortless. It becomes more natural. This is something you do. I remember one time my daughter was 16. She's sitting at the table. My wife said something. My daughter said, yeah, right. And she rolled her eyes. I immediately intervened. And by that, I meant discipline. There is no way she's going to roll her eyes at her mom and say, yeah, right. Come on. That's demeaning. It's disrespectful. What would have happened if you'd have done that to your mom, Bear? Well, you wouldn't be here to do this yeah. interview. I know that. Yeah, exactly. Right. Well, you know, that it's not just uh, protecting the mother from children that are disobeying, but you're, you're protecting her by putting things in order. Uh, another great way to protect your wife, because I, I love that focus of what you're, you're, you're drilling in on here, is spend time with those children, at, 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 you know, with all of them together, or, just, or especially individually. Invest time in those children. That takes energy. That takes, whenever you're going to go someplace, grab one of them and take them with you. In you know, Hawaii, we're seeing such a phenomenal thing here with the, with the uh, coronavirus. We're seeing fathers with their children. You know, the, the scripture verse, the last scripture verse of the Old Testament, I will turn the hearts of the fathers to the sons and the sons to the fathers. And the Deuteronomy, I will carry you like a father carries his son. Um, we're seeing that they're, they're saying, my wife's kind of exhausted. <laughs> I'm going to take the three kids. And we're going to carry the surfboards down to the beach and we're going to paddle out together. You know, or they're following behind them on their skateboard or their little bicycles. But we're actually seeing fathers investing time. If, you know, sometimes mothers just need a break too. But to, for the fathers to set things in order is the way to protect not only your wife but your, but your sanity and, and to protect your children too. We're talking with Dr. Ray Garandi. Dr. Ray, where can they find you again? Well, right now they can find me in my uh, living room, but uh, if they want to find me online, it's drray.com. Drray.com. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite the men to go to deepadventure.com and join Bear's Man Cave. It, we call ourselves, it's kind of like the Cave of Adullam, you know, David's band of mighty warriors. You know where they started. They all came out of a bunch of, the Bible says misfits or people who owed money to people or were running from the law. They joined up with uh, King David while well, he was hiding from King Saul. <laughs> And those band of misfits became a mighty band of warriors. So if you go to our website, uh, women, you can go there too and and sign up your husbands or sons for the man cave. Uh, But you go to our website and there's a big stop sign that says, warning, do not enter, danger. Push that button, uh, join the man cave, and then we'll give you access to our secret Facebook group. And we do Zoom video chats every, just randomly, different times of days, different times of the week. 
um, different times of the day. We do Zoom video chats too. We've been doing that for a few years now. And there, this bunch of, this ragtag bunch of misfits are forming each other into a mighty band of warriors. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. You can vis- visit us at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Men, yes, we mean you. Go to deepadventure.com and check out Bear's Man Cave, a men's only Facebook group. Join the pack with other men as they challenge and inspire one another to manly virtue. Plus, you can dialogue with us in our regular video chat meetups. Plus, get your exclusive content. Join at deepadventure.com. That's deepadventure.com. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We could talk about so much, Dr. Ray. What direction should we go next? I think there's a couple of them I want to go with, Bear. One is called, what would your wife say if she were asked, who is your husband nicest to? Would she say, oh, he treats the ladies at work. They think he's a god. They love him. They are always telling me how nice he is and how complimentary and pleasant. Oh, I wish I'd see a little bit of that. You want your wife to say, my husband treats me better than he treats anyone. That's what you want your wife to say. And if your wife doesn't say that, you got to find out why. You got to ask her. I'll ask these guys in marriage counseling. Do you know why she's so unhappy? No. Have you asked her? <laughs> oh, not really. How long have you been married? 23 years. Do you know why she thinks you don't stick up for her with your mother? No. Have you asked her? Do you know why she thinks you don't back her with the kids? Not really. <laughs> have you asked her? So you want your goal. You want your wife to say, no matter who compliments you, at work, playing sports, uh, media, you know that bear. We have a media persona. Would our wives say that our media persona is as good to them as we come across in this period of time when we're on air? And if we don't, something's really wrong. That's just so perfect. Really that, wrong. That's just so well said. What, 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 well, you know, like from my wife, Cindy, uh, guys, here's, here's a hint. Why don't we make a spike at the uh, at the florist right now and send flowers to your wife? Or like Cindy, I go, I, I I'm neglectful a little bit in Hawaii because I just planted we planted all the 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 hibiscus around here. But um, how often do you bring a flower to your wife just from from the you know a natural flower? Cindy usually gets at least two a week, but normally she get gets one almost every day. Um, it's the little acts of kindnesses that mean so much to a woman. And uh, let her know that you cherish her. That she's, Did she's, she get the ones I sent, Bear? <laughs> I, you, thought wait, you took, I thought they were for me. I thought they were for me. You put your name on that card. <laughs> yeah, but it's true, isn't it? Uh, the, the little acts of kindness like that are so much. And, you know, I get so preoccupied uh, because, you know, with the ministry and everything going on. And then I'll hear my wife's voice talking. And I realize I wasn't listening. It took, takes me 10 seconds to realize she's communicating to me. What a wonderful thing to just stop and look at her and just lean in while she's talking and just have her talk to, to me. It's a miracle. This incredible woman wants to communicate something to me. And it might be about her grocery list or it might be the most incredible wisdom that she has for me about a relationship or might might be something about her in her own life that she wants she wants to just dialogue about. But what a privilege to have a another human being want to communicate with me. You know, you think about it. You could see what we look like, Dr. Ray, the, po- the presence of Jesus and the Imago Dei, what it is to have another human being in your life that's decided they were going to hang out with you for the rest of your life. When they speak, stop, t- 
turn down the TV, look at them, lean into them. And like when we're stuck in traffic, uh, I just tell her, I don't care because I'm right where I want to be. I'm already where I want to be. I want to be next to you, right? When somebody walks in my office, Bear, and they start telling me about their life, and they describe some pretty ugly stuff. They describe, they describe trauma, they describe bent emotions, they describe behavior that is really ugly toward other people. If I were to say, what are you doing? What, what makes you act like that? What are you, stupid? What's wrong with you? They would walk out of that office. I have to, at least for a while, sit there and listen and say, well, how did, how did you come to think like that? Well, what happened when you did that? Well, what, did you intend to do that or was that a mistake? In other words, I got to get inside your head. No matter how ugly that head might be, I got to get in it. And I tell spouses, especially men, because we're not as naturally good communicators as the women are. Do you know how your wife thinks? If I were to ask you, why does she think that? Why does she accuse you of that? Why does she believe that? Why is she nicer to the ladies at church than she is to you? Can you give me an answer? And if you can't, you have to, like you said, not only listen, but start asking. I, I want to know. I, I, I got to get inside what's making you think this way, feel this way, act this way. I got to know it. And, and, and also just know, just know, why do you like that dress? There's a whole lot of just of just the everyday thing is if you cherish that woman, you're going to be curious about that. Ray, I know for me, I she'll start to talk and I got ADHD and I'll just jump in and interrupt her. And then I got to stop. I got to slow down. And I got to say, no, 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 please finish what you were saying because she's so gracious, gracious. No, no, no. Just finish what you're saying. It's anything she says is poetry. Listen to her. And, you know, as a, as a counselor, you ask people questions. As a radio DJ, and you know you have your interview show too, I have learned that everybody's Rocky Balboa. To ask them, ask them, and you're going to find out, wow, what a story this person this person has. So it's not just li communication, you know. Oh, oh yeah, I got to learn how to talk better. No, really, really engage with your wife and ask her, ask her questions. She says one of the things is ask her one more deeper question about what might be the simplest thing. And, and, and you'll find this intimacy is a path towards intimacy. 17 year old son once asked me, hey dad, you know, if I go out with a girl, how, how, can I, how can I make it pleasant? How can I make it work? You know, how can I make it so that she likes me? I said, oh John, that's easy. Ask her all about herself. That's right. Don't be concerned about what you can do and what you know ask her all kinds of things about her family, about her education, about what she likes, about what, just focus on her completely. It's a proven winner every time. You know, you, you mentioned something interesting. You said something about, when well, you, do you know your wife's favorite dress? Well, something similar happened to me, Bear. I was at a marriage conference with my wife and the lady who was facilitating things said, oh, Let's go to Dr. Rake and he can provide the example. She said, men, do you know your wife's favorite flower? And she says, I'll bet Dr. Ray knows. And I said, I do. I do. It's gold medal. I don't know. Oh, yes. Okay. I get it. <laughs> Going too fast for you here, yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. I never heard of that flower, but come to think of it. Yeah. Yeah. Cindy, I know her flowers. You know, she, she loves, uh, Plumeria, she loves hibiscus, anthuriums. We, we talk about flowers a lot, actually. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. It's just you don't good. even know the gold medal is a flower, right? Not this kind of like. Oh, I uh, thought that was a ring. I thought you were no, referring to it. Gold medal <laughs> flowers. You know, something used to bake cakes. I have. Oh. Jeez. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, that's. See, now you guys, I, at the very beginning of this show, I had a caveat. It was like a warning. The man that's known for the worst dad jokes in the world is with us today. So we can, we could probably just bleep that out. I'm not sure, but I know it makes you wince. But uh, oh, he, he okay. does have the be the best of the worst dad jokes, Doctor Ray. Grindy. Oh well, this this is this is true now. When my wife and I were dating, she thought I was dragging my feet. 
she said that I wasn't committing. So two years into the relationship, she gives me an ultimatum. She says, you either tell me your name or it's over. Oh, that's too much commitment. That's way too much commitment. <laughs> Last name too? <laughs> Do I have to give a street address or just the P.O. box? <laughs> Okay, well, now we're definitely digressing. We're talking with Dr. Ray Garandi. Doc, where can they find you? Dr. Ray, D-R-R-A-Y dot com. What do you see is the, is the in, in just one, just briefly before we break here, um, what's been going on in the streets? Uh, with, with uh, I, especially I think of the, why are the young women raging? Why are the young men raging? Is it, is it two different reasons or what, what's going on? It doesn't take much to cause an explosion and even though the majority of those people in the streets just wanted to quietly protest, they were infiltrated. And you know as well as I do, Bear, the mob can get a personality of its own very quickly if it's fueled. Mm -hmm. And it's been fueled by angry, angry people, which again goes back to the breakdown of the family and booting God out of our culture. I think when I look at those people there, I think every one of them has, a fa has father issues. If you really look, if you really went in there and, go, and said, tell me about your relationship with your dad, every one of them would, not all of them, but I think most of them would have a story. Might have been a father that was there their whole life, but it's kind of an absentee father, or he was abusive, or he just wasn't there at all. But I think when you look at the breakdown in society, I think it starts with the men. And, you know, the big break, breakdown in, in American society, as we know, with Humana Vitae and all the things that we knew 50 years ago, the free love generation, there was a time when women said no. And it was a social contract with other women. Now, if you've gone, if you've gone on three <clears throat> dates and you haven't hooked up, then there's something wrong with that women. But guess what? It's not just the women that need to say no. It's the men that need to respect women too and, and guard them and protect them and not what you can get from them but what you can give to them. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm Bear Wozniak with doc, Dr. Ray Grende at drray.com. Thank God because no one will be able to know how to spell his last name. Just drray.com will get you there. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Hey man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Let's just get right to it. We've got Dr. Ray. I want to talk more about this thing. I mean, daddy issues, the father wound, uh, but you see it in the street. You see it. You see it everywhere. That somewhere fathers have men have not have not stepped up, have not played the role that they're supposed to play, 
and the, there's a whole breakdown in society and I think it falls on the la- I think it falls on the men it's our fault if there is a god bear then you have to assume he knows the best way to live he's infinitely smart if he says dads are very very important they are not expendable then he's right and mm-hmm. if you tinker with his system it's going to break and it's going to have a ripple effect throughout the rest of society somebody sent me something just recently in an email that listed all of the pathologies that are much more likely in offspring when there's no dad or when there is a hurtful dad or when no there is kidding. a pathetic you should have seen this list bear pretty much every pathology you could think of was listed on that list and this is not just speculation this is stuff that has been research based this is what happens when you get rid of dads or you make them impotent or let's put it this way when dads get rid of themselves when dads don't man up when dads aren't willing to pay the price it's not yes. they, no one can do anything to you men don't you're not a victim it's you made your decision to do that 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 gif of homer simpson backing into the shrubbery disappearing behind a bush god and we're not here to we're not here to just you know point the finger at you here we're here to encourage you that god uh god has ordained you has established you this unique qualities and characteristics that are needed in our society more than ever and god is calling you back to him you know god the father right he's a father he's more of a father than any of us are he eternally begat his son that's what love do it does it procreates you're made in his image not only are you made in his image and likeness but you're but you are called fathers uh god is calling you not to, to rebuke you you know god god will take you out to the woodshed but then it's time to get cleaned up clear clear out clear your head and begin to move what are the, what are the things a father can do that's that's uh, maybe not even though maybe his kids are more adult now or maybe he's not in the household or what what can a man do what's the steps he can take to begin build bridges of 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 communication maybe even before he can even try to be a father again to children he's neglected most common thing i see now bear most common referral is adult children who are wayward they have left the faith they are living turbulent lives. They are, they are behaving in ways that perhaps they were never raised. I tell the dads, do not, do not fracture that relationship. If your son is same-sex attraction, you still got to keep contact with him. If your son is living with his girlfriend, you, you almost got to accept her as someone that you can show love to because otherwise, if you break that relationship, you're done. You have no influence whatsoever. You know, I have five sons, some of them doing well in life, some of them doing not so well, but I can't show a dis, a disfavor. The ones that are doing okay, I might be able to relate better to, that's true, but I cannot clearly show that, well, you know, you just aren't what I want you to be. So uh, you'll get, uh, you'll get a few sprinklings of my attention and affection. No, that son's got to know he is loved, even though I don't condone or approve of what he's doing. I tell the guys, do not, I can't tell you how many guys come to me and say, I just want to, I just want to cut it off. Why? Well, he knows I don't approve of that. I know, but maybe now he needs you more than ever. Yeah. There's this thing about, uh, oh, a wayward child where you, you uh, have to love them. We love them. You just don't accept their decisions. Yeah. What, what do you what do, do you in a situation do? where you have a, 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 a gay son who wants to introduce you to his, his, his gay husband? What, 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 in other words, is the response to say, I don't want to meet that person, but I still love you. I, I want to have a relationship with you, but I can't, I, I, I can't, I don't want to hear you tell me about the latest vacation you're going on together or what that person's, uh, you know, how do you, how, where do you draw that line and, and still keep the, line, the lines of love there? In this case, Bear, I can speak from personal experience. Um, On one hand, our son knows that we really don't want to hear the details of how he's living his life. He knows that. So he respects it. He doesn't share too much with us. On the other hand, if you saw how we relate to that son, you would think there's absolutely nothing he's doing. 
that we disapprove of. And if in fact he had his friend come to our house, I'd have a few rules in terms of just what kind of expression they can have in their relationship. And as long as they show it as a relationship between two men, otherwise I would probably not say, you're welcome here, but your friend is not. I, I wouldn't probably do that because then what so often happens in so many of these relationships is you lose your son or you lose your daughter. It's very difficult because you don't, by, by having a conversation with someone, uh, you can end up, um, hmm, ha, you know, if, if someone is, if one of my kids comes to me and they're doing something that I know isn't, isn't right, like for example, maybe, some, maybe someone's living, living with someone and they, and they want to talk about their plans to buy a house and things like that. I really don't show any interest in that. And they, so they've learned not, you know, not saying one of my kids is doing that, but to not show interest in that sort of thing where they're acting out uh, and yet still show them there's, there's lines of communication. It's like my kids, it always seems like when they, my job is to stay who I am and not be moved. But when one of my kids starts pulling away, I find and making bad decisions, I find they communicate with me less and less. Yes, they so don't that's the one I reach out to. I know something. I know they're making bad decisions because hmm, I haven't heard from that child lately. You know, and so they need to know your love and, uh, and affection more than ever. But they also need to know that that lighthouse on that on that coastline isn't moving. That that's the that that waypoint of their father's uh, uh, belief in how to live life is hasn't changed. They need. They can almost feel that as they move away from who you are and how you've raised them, it's almost like a rubber band that hopefully someday will pull them back, but you've got to maintain the relationship with them. I draw this parallel. For most of us, some of the things that our kids do that creates a distance is sexual sins of various types. That, that's the main thing people struggle with. I ask them, what if your 22 year old son said, I hate my grandfather's guts. I wish he were dead. I would probably do it myself, except I don't want to go to jail. I asked them, would you then shun your son the very same way you're shunning him because he's living with his girlfriend? Would you do that? Because that's, that's as, every bit as serious a sin. Our Lord is real clear about that. That's mm -hmm. that's murder of the heart. Mm -hmm. So so do we pick and choose the kinds of sins we're going to shun our offspring for? We got to be real careful there. Yeah, it's very difficult. Would you go to a son's house that is living with some living with someone and have Thanksgiving dinner? Mm -hmm. It all comes down to judgment. I did it once. My son was living with this girl. He's no longer with her, but he's living with her, and he invited us over for Mother's Day. We went. He knew exactly where we stood regarding his living with her. But there you we go. went. There you go. I think what you're saying is, is, I think what you're saying, the emphasis I have is there's no, they, re they recognize that there's no change in who you are and what you stand for. And I think that's the main thing. You can give them, you can accommodate through, you know, give grace and you can, uh, and you want to keep that relationship and the communication open. But every one of my kids, it's just interesting how they've gradually coming back to this waypoint where I never moved from. They, oh, I have four, four adult children now, and they all kind of have been finding their way back to that same, uh, not all of them, but they gradually come back to that same point. And when a child is, is, is ignoring you, you know something's up. So why not reach out and try to communicate? And, you know, Bear, were you this were you this embracing of your faith when you were 22? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I was yeah. I, I was fortunate. At the age of 19, I had a dramatic. <laughs> you wouldn't want okay, to know well, me. You you're unusual. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't want to know me. I was I was so, and still am. I'm a, I, I, yeah. I had a great passion for the Lord. Yeah, when I was okay. 19. Yeah. Because you're unusual. Because typically, when we look back at when we're 22, most of us were nowhere near embracing the faith like we are now it usually takes adult situations you know like having a child or something like that that wakes you up to it i have uh, two grandchildren out of wedlock well yesterday we baptized we had our little baby grandson out of wedlock baptized because that daughter who had some significant problems with mental illness uh, we we kept her in our circle we kept her in our circle she she knew she could count on us no matter what. And she called us and said, I want to baptize 
Beautiful, <laughs> beautiful. So there's there's that balance of love and mercy, love and truth. The, the two wings, the two wings of the eagle. They have to they have to soar together. Re, you know, there in in Hawaii we we think of men as a strong uh, palm tree, and as women as a, as an open bay with arms open. We have to have that kind of that that waypoint of the man standing strong, but we also have to have open arms. It's always inviting them in, always inviting them in. Uh, it got real with Dr. Ray today. Dr. Ray, thanks for being with us. So they can find you where? Dr. Ray Garendi. What's Dr. your website Ray. again? Dr. Oh, Ray. You can go to my Facebook too. But they Facebook. could, someone could buy that URL for you for, from how much would it cost them to buy the drray.com URL now? But what did you charge me? I charged you 12,000. You could probably sell oh. for a million now, I would think. <laughs> Maybe 12,000. 12,001. Hey, <laughs> I don't know how many other Dr. Rays there are. <laughs> <laughs> We've uh, talked to my good friend, Dr. Ray Grandy. I miss you, man. I'm uh, hoping we get a chance to bump into each other again soon. We got to get these conferences back up and running. Yeah, I know. I think my next one's in, da- in San Angelo, Texas, sometime in August. So I hopefully, hope hopefully keep it, keep, keep, keep it keeps going. Until next we- week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Hey man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out.